What is up guys, it's the Dervinator here, the time's finally arrived. Let's kick the month of Ratchet off today with the original, the classic, the one, the only, Ratchet and Clank for the PlayStation 2. I'm super excited to be able to do my first official review for YouTube, so let's waste no time and get right into it. Believe it or not, I was actually introduced to the Ratchet and Clank series before- Jeez. <clears throat> As I was saying, I was actually introduced to the Ratchet and Clank series via the PlayStation 2 demo disc, where you could play on either Metropolis or Blackwater City. It's basically the same, just with indestructible lampposts. These cool wanted posters of Ratchet and Clank. Listen up, you lard balls! <clears throat> okay, that's enough of that. Alright, here we go. The one that started it all, Ratchet and Clank. Surprisingly, I didn't actually beat this game until I was well and truly, you know, through number two several times, because eight-year-old me didn't really appreciate what this game had to offer. Eventually, I did play through it several times on the PlayStation 2. Well, let's get stuck into the story. Spoiler alert, I guess? So the game starts with a small little robot, XJ0461, being assumingly accidentally created in a robot factory. He sees something shocking on an infobot, causing him to flee the planet while being pursued by security. Meanwhile, on planet Velden, we see a bored Lombax named Ratchet repairing a ship. No doubt longing for adventure, dreaming of a life among the stars, longing for something more than just a mere Lombax mechanic. Either or he's just trying to fix his ship. Actually, in this game, he doesn't appear to be interested in anything big like becoming a hero or saving the universe, contrary to, uh... What's been shown in the, like, the trailers for the new reboot. He, he just wants to get a ship started. Which he immediately crashes. Way to go there, Ratchet. But before that happens, Clank crash lands on Veldin, catching the attention of Ratchet. He retrieves Clank, and the little robot informs him of Chairman Drake's plan to go around a bunch of different planets, cut a chunk out of it, and basically construct a whole new world. Which is bad because, as he explains, the planets will essentially be destroyed. Unfortunately, this change in mass will cause your planet to spin out of control and drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas. But, of course, sacrifices must be made. Clank wishes to seek out a heroic figure like Captain Quark. Ratchet agrees to help Clank in exchange for him fixing his ship. So the two agree, they team up, uh, Ratchet nicknames Clank, Clank, and then they crash land into a smoldering city. Off to a great start, you are. It's here on Planet Novalis where the planetary chairman rewards you with a new ship after saving him. And where you meet the plumber for the first time. This guy is great and he appears in nearly every Ratchet and Clank game. You get two info bots that give you coordinates to two new planets for you to visit. One having an item you're required to complete the other. This is a trend you'll see for the rest of the game essentially. Each planet will lead you to another planet and you'll search for Chairman Drek and Captain Quark. Along the way you'll encounter fun characters like Al, who equips Clank with a nifty little helipack upgrade, and Skid McMarks who gives Ratchet a hoverboard for helping to save him, and Helga. You've been drill, drill, drill for the rest of the day! Ah, that's better. So the pair travel to Blackwater City because apparently the winner gets to meet Captain Quark. Eventually they do meet him, and he suspiciously invites them to like his death course training camp facility. Upon completing the course, Quark tries to kill you. What? Yep, so it turns out Captain Quark's been working for Chairman Drek the whole time, and it's at this point where Ratchet agrees he's gonna help Clank take down Drek. So basically from here on out, it's just the dynamic duo going from planet to planet, hunting down Drek, each time finding a new reason to move on to yet another planet. Quark shows up on the space station to hinder their journey again, but they take that three-fingered dope down in a space battle, and he crash lands on a nearby planet, assumingly dying. So you carry on your way, going from place to place, hunting down Drek, meeting more colourful characters, none of which you will return in the series, so I won't bother showing them. Except this guy. This guy looks familiar. Is it Al? It's Al, isn't it? Eventually the pair track him down and find out that the next planet on Drek's to destroy list is Ratchet's home planet, Veldin. You go there, fight some goons, Drek shows up in a massive armoured robot suit, and it's time to take this sucker down. This guy soaks up a heck of a lot of ammo, so make sure to stock up before having a go. Also, that damn final platform is a fraud. A fraud, I tell you! See? You see that? I almost died. A crap ton of bullets later, and Drek is defeated. You turn the giant planet destroying laser thingy on Drek's new world, blowing it into oblivion with Drek along with it. Clank saves Ratchet's life again, and the pair walk off into the sunset of Saviors of the Galaxy. Oh, and also, uh, Captain Quark's still alive. Hi, I'm Steve... McQuark. 
Wait a second. The name's Steve. Pleased to meet you. Thank you, and have a quark-tastic day! And that's just the story. <laughs> These are gonna be some damn long reviews. As for the characters, Chairman Drek is a great villain. He's got a great voice and an awesome evil plan. Men, you are about to embark on a very dangerous mission. We will be launching a heavily armed surprise attack from our new moon base against a completely unarmed planet. Actually, that doesn't sound too dangerous. <clears throat> Nevertheless, your orders are simple. Destroy anything that moves. Steal the power generators from Gorda City. Then, destroy anything that doesn't move. <laughs> oh, and don't forget, have fun. The, the side characters are fun and memorable. Geronimo! I'm supposed to give you a swing shot, so you can sway to and fro like little insects. No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy, per se. <laughs> Soldier! Find a way to use that shaft to infiltrate the compound undetected! Hmm... Look, the plumber's back. Very funny. You will find Veritanium for me. No, I will not. You will bring me more Veritanium. You can't be serious. Ah, eh, well, I tried. Quark is... bearable. I suppose after 12 games, I'm used to them by now. You catch on quick. You can always trust Gatatron quality, or my name's not... Steve. Clank is nowhere near as charismatic as, say, Dexter, but he's not meant to be. He's meant to be, you know, the polar opposite to Ratchet. You know, he's intelligent, uh, you know, is incredibly literal, doesn't always understand social situations. This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Oh, Ratchet, am I cool now? <laughs> yeah, you the man, Clank. I love it when a plan comes together. What do you mean? What do you think he means, genius? Ratchet, on the other hand, is a dick in this game. Yes, believe it or not, the original Ratchet was mean-spirited, he was grouchy, and he was just really selfish. I mean, for most of the game, he didn't even want to help save the frickin' galaxy. You numbskull. Get off of me, you idiot. Genius. I wonder what that infobot is for. Maybe it can replace you. Are you serious? That's it. I am out of here. Yeah? Well, I'm done with this stupid hero stuff. I got my own agenda now. Why don't you go help him? Into another trap. Well, go on. Go fight some evil. As soon as I find Quark, I'm selling you for scrap. Yeah? Well, I got bigger fish to fry. Bigger than the galaxy? Well, different fish anyway. Now, of course, by the end of the game, his character's gone through a change, and he's, you know, growing into the hero we love today. And that's just yet another one of the game's many merits. Now this guy's gonna blow up an entire planet? That's just me. Look, maybe you were right. This is a lot bigger than you or me. I was really selfish focusing on Quark. The original voice of Ratchet, Mikey Kelly, would never return to play Ratchet again in future installments. But we'll talk about that in a later review. Now, let's get stuck into this gameplay. Ratchet and Clank is a pure 3D action-adventure platformer, back when action-adventure actually meant something. As in, it was an adventure full of action, obviously. It wasn't all jumping across platforms and solving puzzles, heck no! It wasn't as simple as Crash Bandicoot or the production company Insomniac's previous works, the Spyro games, but it wasn't as complicated as, say, <laughs> the Ratchet and Clank games we get nowadays. But that works to the game's advantage. That makes this one of the most unique Ratchet and Clank games because its particular style that would be improved upon and changed enough in future installments to the franchise to be considered a different experience while playing it. You've got your expected jump and double jump. Ratchet has a signature wrench which you can use to destroy crates and defeat most enemies. There's also other abilities like wall jumping, back flipping, and the ability to throw your wrench or slam it down for extra damage. The heli pack, the thruster pack, the hydro pack, you get the picture. There's a lot of stuff Ratchet can do. Oh yeah, and there's hoverboard racing. Did I mention there's hoverboard racing? There's hoverboard racing in this game. In certain sections of the game, you can actually play as Clank as well. But after playing some of the future games in the series, these sections seem a bit too slow and, you know, dull for my taste. They're still alright though, and they really add to the, you know, unique variety of gameplay experiences in this game. 
Anyway, undoubtedly the best part of many Ratchet and Clank games are the weapons, and boy are there a heck of a lot of awesome ones to choose from here. You've got your typical blaster, and rocket launcher for sure, but you've also got a mine glove to leave mines in your path, glove of doom to spawn little robots to seek out enemies, a flamethrower, a ray gun that turns enemies into chickens. That is the Morph Ray, and that, of course, is Jerry. Uh, the Morph Ray is used in Ratchet and Clank to turn your enemies into chickens. No, no, wait, before you do that, just explain to me how it's going to work. Oh, it worked. <laughs> Jerry's a chicken. And of course, the mighty Rhino. <laughs> this thing is heavy. Yeah, try carrying it around in your trench coat for two months. This beast of a gun takes a heck of a long time to save up for, but once you get it, you can annihilate anything and everything in your path with a huge barrage of missiles. Also, it makes bosses a joke. I mean, it takes out an entire chunk of their life bar in one pull of the trigger. There's a ton more amazing weapons for you to try out as well. Then there's the bomb glove. This thing sucks. There's next to no targeting and it's, it's, just, it's just bad. Oh yeah, and ammo for most weapons you can get from ammo crates. Yay. Of course these aren't free, and that's where bolts come in. Bolts are this game's currency. You get bolts from crates, enemies, the bolt grabber, or just from lying around the levels. In this game, one bolt equals one bolt. No score multipliers like in the future games, so saving takes a lot more time, but that means it feels so gratifying when you finally get that weapon or upgrade that you've been saving for for so long, especially when it's the Rhino. Unfortunately, there's no strafing in this game, which makes aiming a little tougher, but I feel that just adds to the challenge. Well, that and the limited life bar, which you can extend twice later in the game for a hefty price, but it's still pretty tough. In addition to all the weapons, there are also gadgets, which aren't lethal, but are required for doing things like opening doors, traversing the terrain, or swinging around the levels. I love the detail of the worlds in these games. The art direction is just amazing. Another awesome feature is that there isn't really any loading screens, just, you know, things of Ratchet flying through space and getting out of his ship. Another amazing part of this game is the sound design. Like, the sounds your weapons make when you pull them out is just awesome. I mean, listen to this! That sounds so awesome! But sadly, they never really made other awesome weapon sounds in, like, the future games. I mean, there's one or two here and there, but... Nothing like in this game. Similarly, the music in this game is amazing. Oh, the music, it's just so good. It's definitely my favorite Ratchet and Clank soundtrack of all time in like the whole series. And might even be my favorite video game soundtrack. Um, apart from Kingdom Hearts 2, of course. Special mention to Novellus, I think that's how you pronounce it, and Metropolis. Like, how can you not bob your head to this? What else can I say? The levels are really well laid out, great for its time. I love searching for like glitch spots in secret areas. What the? What? 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 Why is this here? What, what is its purpose? What, what's going on here? So, somebody please explain this to me. What is? What, why is there? What? Why is this here? Speaking of hidden areas, this game's hidden collectibles come in the form of gold bolts. These babies you'll find scattered hidden throughout the levels, and are always fun to find, whether you're blowing up a wall, jumping into a hidden area, or returning to an old planet with a gadget you previously didn't have to help you find where the gold bolt is. After you beat the game, you can start the game again with all your weapons and bolts. You can access the gold weapons room where you can buy special gold variants of some of your weapons using your hard-earned gold bolts and regular bolts. Or, if you're clever like me, you can get a few of them earlier in the game in a secret gold hidden weapons room. Link in the description for an old video I did on that one. Oh yeah, and there's also skill points, which can range from simple things like shooting down chips or shooting down a blimp, to really crazy things like beating a super fast time on the hoverboard racing, or defeating a boss using only the wrench. They're, they don't really reward you with much in this game, like in the future games, but you do get like a cool making of video, epilogue, commercials, stuff like that. Now, it's not all smiles and sunshine though, like, when you restart the game, you don't keep all of your gadgets, even though you keep all your weapons. And you might think, well that sounds fair, because if you started with the swing shot and the trespasser, then you could, you know, skip entire levels. Well, hang on, no you can't, because you wouldn't have the info bot for the next planet. So, what, what's the harm of letting you keep swing shot and trespasser? Because you can still do the things the game wants you to do, just in a different order. Anyway, that's not too bad, and I can live with that, but why do they have to take away your helipack upgrades? I mean, you, you get so used to using it, when you play through the game to speed through the levels, that when you start a new game and you don't have it, it's like a really jarring transition. 
Also, that Melsa helmet. I mean, you got to talk to Skid's agent, get the hoverboard off Skid, go to Blackwater City and enter the hoverboard race. You got to win the hoverboard race, and then you got to go back to the planet with Skid's agent on it and talk to him, and he gives you this like little helmet thing. It's really good on some planets because it gives you the help of like a little flying robot companion that doesn't constantly spit out annoying catchphrases. I'm looking at you, Mr. Zircon. And he just, you know, mows down enemies with like a little rapid fire machine gun. But if you're like me and you forget to go back to previous planets to get stuff like this, you'll be like halfway through the game before you even remember to do this sort of thing. So it's like, why take it away from me in the first place? Maybe it's just me, but as a kid I used to play through all the Ratchet and Clank games like dozens of times. And it would always annoy me where in this one, you know, it would take away a lot of your good gadgets and items. And it would be like a real pace breaker. But if that's the worst thing in this game, then I can't really complain. And to be honest, I can't really say anything bad about it. For a long time Ratchet and Clank fan, its simplicity may drive you away and make you feel like it's not a very good game. Like if you go from any other Ratchet and Clank game to this, then it may seem very slow, clunky, shallow, and sometimes difficult. But it's not, it's just simple, and it's the first game in the franchise. This combined with everything else I've said in this review, makes this one of the most unique and individual Ratchet and Clank games in the series. Plus I really find that its simplicity gives it good long time replay value, not so much immediate replay value if that makes sense. Like if you play through the game several times in a row, you may find yourself getting annoyed at the taking away of your items every time you restart. Or worse, you'll find yourself getting bored at the lack of challenge mode and weapon upgrading that the other games offer. But every now and then you might feel like going back and revisiting this game because of its unique gameplay style. It's a very different feeling Ratchet and Clank game while still remaining true to the established formula. Unlike Q-Force and Awful 1. I haven't played this since 2006. It's been 10 years since I played Ratchet and Clank 1 on the PlayStation 2. So in closing, if you've never played a Ratchet and Clank game before... Why? Well, if you're gonna start, make sure you start with the first Ratchet and Clank. So it can get you into the swing of things, pun intended. And so you can see how this fantastic game franchise started out. And if you don't like it, just know that it gets way bigger and better in the next 10 or so games. As I said, I didn't play this game as much as a kid, so when the HD collection came out, I found myself playing this game the most because I didn't play it as much as a kid, and because of the fact that it had like the easiest platinum trophy in the HD trilogy. So if this review's gone on for too long, then it's because I've had so much experience playing this particular title over the last few years, more so than the others, so this will probably be one of the longest reviews, so don't worry, the other reviews won't be anywhere near as long as this one. Personally, this isn't my favourite game in the series. Although it has grown on me exponentially in recent years, Nostalgia will always be a major contributing factor in swaying, you know, which one of my games is the favourite. And as someone who loves this series as much as I do, there are just too many other titles in the franchise that I'd rather pick up and play before this one. If you'd asked 8 year old me what I thought of this game, I would have said it was still fun, just a lot slower and with less replay value and awesome music. Ugh, I always hated Blackwater City as a kid because I would always drown on this part. Now I'd say this is a damn good game on its own, and it's definitely a worthy addition to the Ratchet and Clank series. And of course it was the duo's first game, so you can't judge them too harshly. Basically, play through this one once or twice before going back to the other games in the series. Thank you so much for watching this review, guys, and I'm so sorry that it went on for so long. I just had a lot to say about this game, and because it was my first official review, I wanted to make sure it was a damn good one. Heck, it even took me three hours of non-stop writing just to write the script for this. Look at this thing, it's 11 pages long. I'm not looking forward to editing this. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and please check out my next review of Ratchet and Clank 2, which will hopefully be coming soon and be a lot shorter. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.